This is a 1984 AR turntable. Sound isn't so noticeable right now, but there's a definite click in the motor. So here it is with the belt off. It's much more noticeable. So one thing that's a bit of a mystery to me about these ARs is that um, with the unit plugged into the power, or the power switch off, you can feel a vibration coming from the motor, especially if you try and give it a turn. It's like it's energized to a degree, but uh, anyway, it's sort of odd. But on this particular motor with this click, when I pull the power plug from the wall, then that feeling of it being energized goes away. But on this particular motor, this is noticeably tight. Like I can feel what almost feels like the bearings in a in detente in there. So I don't know if it's just grease that's tight or if there's something like old grease that's not allowing it to turn smoothly. But it's definitely not a smooth feeling motor when I just rock it without the power on. There's one more example of how tight this motor is. If I come and I give it a spin with my finger, it just it immediately stops. There's no, it doesn't even pretend to coast. So here's the bottom of this Hurst motor. I just pulled that cap off, came right off. I didn't have to use any tools or anything. And this is me spinning the pulley on the other side of the top side of the table. So the bearing is obviously not supported at the bottom of the motor. It must have single bearing on the other side of the uh, this little armature here. So here's the motor just running by itself. There's no pulley, no belt. Hopefully you can hear that. It's definitely not quiet. Tick, 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 tick. I've got the motor running here, just sitting on this little modified end table that I have. You can definitely hear it clicking. So I've seen, read some stuff online where people think it's a result of the wrong belt or belt tension or the belt pulling the shaft up and down but this is without the pulley without the shaft it's just an intrinsic issue with the motor itself so there's an article on the um, vinyl nirvana web page where he dave the owner of vinyl nirvana recounts a discussion he had with guy merrill who used to modify ar turntables and um, there's a bunch of st steps described for trying to reduce the slop in the shaft but the first step was simply oiling the shaft so, and letting it run for a long time like periods of days so i've got this sewing machine oil synthetic lubricant what the what merrill told dave at vinyl nirvana was to use 30 weight oil but uh I'm going to use this. Okay. 
partially because I can dose it easily the way that they supplied this bottle. And also because 30 weight seems mighty happy to me. At least for this first stage where I think penetration is probably more of an issue than lubrication. So you can see it's kind of pulled up there on the top. And I'm just going to let it run like that for a while. Alright, well that uh, web page on Vinyl Nirvana's website said that this let the oil seep in with the motor running business. It takes about a day. Right now this has been like an hour and there's no noticeable change so it's definitely going to be a long-term process. Well, I'll check in with it tomorrow sometime. Okay so this is a day later. It's been running for about 24 hours with some sewing machine oil that was dropped on the shaft. You can kind of still see a bead of it there. And the motor's not quiet, but that knocking sound seems to have dissipated, to gone away. You can still hear an unevenness. But the knock is gone. I think what I'm going to do at this stage is mount the motor back up and see how it behaves when it's installed and driving the bladder. This this video segment here is made just a couple minutes after the previous one. I put the back cap on the motor, that, that metal can lid on the back, which was off for the last 24 hours. And um, it actually quieted things up quite a bit. So when I turn this motor on now, it seems quite a bit quieter than it was without that back cap on it. It definitely still has that uneven sound to it, but it's... Going back to the videos that I made yesterday, it seems better now than it was 24 hours ago. I'm going to go ahead and mount it back up and see how things sound. Okay, so this is the motor installed back on the turntable. I'm going to turn it on now. Not silent. I'm um, have, having a bit of a hard time remembering whether the noise I had been making was louder than it is now. I'm just going to have to go back and watch the video, but the real test will be playing it in the room, which is when I really notice it. This is my other AR. I'm going to turn it on without the platter, without the main platter, to see what it sounds like just running. basically silent. So the other AR that I've been working on at Hearst Motor is nowhere near fixed. It may be quieter and better than yesterday, but it's nowhere near where it needs to be. So here's the motor running again. I just sprayed it with... I took so the back of the motors off and I sprayed the insides with this CRC Quick Clean. It's uh, tetrachloroethylene. It's their part number 03180. And then I blew it out with one of these compressed air in a can things. And it's noticeably quieter. It's still very buzzy when I have it held in my hands. Like I can feel it vibrating. But 
it's an improvement. So this is really something that's kind of come out of order here, but thing I just noticed after I started thinking about how this motor must be put together is that this sorry I don't know if you can see that but the brass bushing one phone focus the brass bushing there is actually something that rotates with the shaft so the bearing surface is not where the shaft is touching the brass, but where the brass is, the outer surface of the brass. So I've decided to try again with the oil. Um, so what I have what I did a few minutes ago was to spray the whole motor out with dry chloroethylene. And electrical parts cleaner and then blow dry it with a compressed air and can which quieted things up quite a bit um, it's buzzing because it's sitting on that pie tin now and then I took a q-tip with some contact cleaner and I really cleaned off the area where that brass bushing the outer perimeter of that brass bushing which is uh, the moving edge of it and then I put about 10 drops of oil on the shaft until it sort of overflowed that little well so I know that that external edge of the bearing is actually sitting in the oil I think what I had on there last night for the last 24 hours was maybe not quite enough oil to to get to that bearing surface because I was thinking the bearing surface was where the vertical shaft meets the bushing but in fact that interface is fixed so this is when I pick the motor up and hold it it's still noticeably buzzy but when it's pressed tight like it would be screwed to the bottom of the turntable it's pretty quiet all right so this is the day after I uh, sprayed the motor out with contact cleaner and it's running really pretty quietly right now so it's on now Hard to see it, but it's turning. So it's quiet just sitting there. It's basically silent when it's clamped down, which it, you know, it used to used to buzz quite a bit uh, audibly. It's still got a buzz, a vibration buzz, a pretty significant vibration buzz. It doesn't really manifest itself in a noise anymore and certainly doesn't have that uneven tick 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 so at this stage um, I'm actually going to replace the run capacitor because I read online that um, if the capacitance isn't correct which it may not be anymore since this table is 35 years old that the motor can vibrate so um, I've got some parts ordered but even if nothing changes from here on out it's still a significant improvement so basically at this point the thing that made the biggest difference was spraying it out with the contact cleaner and then the air in a can and then um, that contact cleaner is gonna strip out any grease old and crusty or still good so this this bearing area there where that bronze brass or bronze bushing is spinning around needs to be lubricated right now i've just used this light sewing machine oil which i don't think it's going to be good for another 35 years so having sprayed it 
um, and remove whatever lubrication was there from original. It cleaned up the sound but also stripped it out of course. So it may need to be re-lubricated on a relatively frequent basis. The, um, this bearing well is, I think the AR specs say to check it every year. So I guess I'll just make it a point of doing the bearing well and the motor at the same time. The, um, I'm going to turn this off. The pulley was, there was like a glue cap on there holding, it looks to me like they glued the pulley onto the shaft because it's a, it's not really a press fit. It just kind of slides over there, especially the, the upper part. So they've got this long collar on the pulley in order to try and give it some um, rigidity and some connection there with the shaft. But uh, anyway, going forward, assuming that I don't have to use some sort of Loctite or glue or whatever to, to get that pulley to stay in place, it won't be any particular problem to re-lube that bearing surface. And this oil that I bought, even if the pulley is fixed in place, the oil I bought has this um, not sharp lure lock needle tip to the bottle and um, <clears throat> it's it's perfect for getting in there even with the, the motor mounted even even if that space gets you know pretty tight with everything assembled I don't really have any doubt that it'll be possible to, to get some lubricant at least on the top side of that motor where I've been lubricating it so far so overall um, pretty positive um, outcome so far and with the capacitor um, being dialed in perhaps it'll be even better all right so I decided to put the table together more or less for now I left the bottom panel off because uh, I'm gonna go back into it in about a week I'm waiting for some capacitors to come to try and get the motor run capacitor dialed in but for now the motor is mounted up again and uh, the rest of the platter is not on, but I want to be able to show it to you and uh, see it spin. The main part of the platter is on, and we can <clears throat> hear what it sounds like. So that's way, way quieter than it used to be. All I can hear is ticking on the clock in the background. If I get up close to it, I can hear it, but I'm not going to be hearing that over any kind of music. The ticking, the knocking before wasn't super loud. If I had something playing on the stereo that was a reasonable volume, I couldn't hear it. But anything quiet, I could definitely hear it. But this is pretty much as silent as it was brand new I would think well, I'm pretty happy about that so that's it for for this phase next phase isn't really mechanical it's electrical so I'm just gonna leave it at that for a while there's other things that need to be done on this table but for now I think the motor itself is good to go for a while well there's more work to be done here That's Joe Walsh, if you can't tell, playing like 20 RPM. The table is rotating noticeably slow, which it wasn't doing before I did this work on the motor. So there's some stuff to go back and look at. This could still just be the motor capacitors, but it was running the correct speed before I did this work. Alright, a further update on this table. Last night when I 
put the table back together and brought it up and was not spinning at speed and uh, turns out it's because that pulley was not tight on the shaft it's when I first took the table apart there was clearly like a little spot of glue on the top of that shaft to the pulley so it's a little bit of a press fit but not very tight um, so what I've done now is I took it, the outer platter off and put talc on the belt and cleaned the pulley surfaces, which I don't think was really related to the speed issue, but I figured I should do it at the same time. And then I put some Loctite blue on the shaft. Hopefully I'm not going to have an impossible time getting it back off next time. Don't use the red. Um, Anyway, if, it, if it's difficult to get off next time around, I'll use a heat gun on that to soften it up. And what I did was I put the pulley on part way so the shaft wasn't protruding and it had a little well. And I put the Loctite blue in the well and then I pushed the shaft down and up and down and up a little bit to try and get the Loctite blue on the interface of the shaft and the well or the inner the diameter of the, of the pulley and then I set the pulley height and then I'm just going to wait for that Loctite to set up. So I'll give it a little while um, to set up and then I'll come back and give it a try. <laughs> so that solves the speed issue. Um, problem was that the pulley was slipping on the motor shaft and it was being driven but not being driven at full speed. So the Loctite, etc. fixed that. Joe Walsh is now singing the way he's supposed to sing. And uh, everything's good with the motor for now. If you, I mean you can kind of hear this, I'll turn to a different source. So the motor is completely silent relative to the other just general background noise in the room. So even with the volume completely off, I'm not hearing the motor, which is a dramatic improvement from before. So, so far so good. Um, next step is the uh, run capacitor. And once that's dealt with, then I'm going to rebuild the tone arm pivot because that's a real mess.